a young man named Albert Friedrich worked behind the bar in the old Southern Hotel on Main Plaza in San Antonio. It wasn't long before the young Friedrich opened his own small saloon across Nola Rosa Street from the Southern Hotel. This is where the Buckhorn Saloon and Collection of Horns was started. During the Buckhorn's early days, men came here from the valleys of southwest Texas rivers. Rappers, traders, cowboys, and cattlemen brought extraordinary specimens of horns to the Buckhorn. These horns would often be traded for a shot of whiskey or a beer. Thus, the horn collection grew one by one. Albert Friedrich's father, Wenzel, was a furniture maker. He specialized in using cattle horns. The elder Friedrich added to the horn collection by making horn chairs for the Buckhorn Saloon. In a few short years, the collection was vast and noteworthy. 1896. The Buckhorn moved to the corner of Houston and Soledad Streets, where the famous horn collection continued to grow. 1898. The Spanish-American War begins. President Teddy Roosevelt organized the Rough Riders in San Antonio, and while in town visited the famous Buckhorn to recruit him. Wendell Friedrich, Albert's father, presented Teddy with a horn chair made up of over 20 buffalo horns to thank him for his business. It is on display to this day with President Roosevelt's field desk, which was used in the Battle of San Juan Hill. 29 years ago, the idea of decorating my place with mounted horns forced itself upon me. During that period, time, money, and energy have been spent, and I am proud to state that I now possess the grandest and largest collection of horns existing, native as well as foreign. Nineteen fourteen, Albert Friedrich acquires a mountain gorilla from two German hunters. He is the first gorilla ever to be put on display in the state of Texas. With the outbreak of World War I, recruits came to San Antonio for training, and soon the stories of the Buckhorn Saloon, the Mountain Gorilla, and the famous collection of horns began to spread worldwide. 1920. Prohibition begins, and the Buckhorn Saloon discontinues the sale of alcohol. The Buckhorn thrives as a curio store and soda fountain. Curios were placed on sale at the Buckhorn Saloon due to the insistent demands by the tourists who wanted a souvenir of this world-famous place. Tens of thousands of Texas items were sold. For many years, there was great commerce in armadillo baskets and rattlesnake lunch bottles. 1922. The Buckhorn moves to a larger state on the corner of Houston and South Florida. It was here the mountain gorilla was placed in the front window and nicknamed the Gar. That gorilla still remains on display to this day. You can find him right upstairs in the African Hall. 1956. The Lone Star Food Company purchased the world famous Buckhorn collection of horns. Harry Jersey, resident of Lone Star, had a building erected on the grounds to house the collection. 1981. The Buckhorn celebrates its 100th anniversary. 1998. The Lone Star Brewery in San Antonio closes, and the new owner, Stroke Brewery Company, moves brewing to Long Beach, Texas. In order to keep the Buckhorn collection in San Antonio, the granddaughter of Albert Friedrich, Mary Friedrich Rogers, and her husband, Wallace Rogers Jr., Buy back the collection. The new and improved Buckhorn and Saloon moved to its current location on the corner of Houston and Preston Streets, just blocks from its original location. 2006. The former Texas Ranger Association teams with the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum to gather their artifacts and memorabilia from the history of the Texas Rangers to the oldest saloon in Texas. The Texas Ranger Museum opens at the Buckhorn. 
This museum houses hundreds of Texas Ranger artifacts, including revolvers, automatic handguns, sawed off shotguns, badges, photographs, as well as Ranger Town and Mahani and Clyde exhibit, complete with a 34 order for the deluxe. The Buckhorn Saloon and Museum opens two new exhibits, the American Science Show and the Carnival of Curiosity. Two unique experiences that combine American history and modern science with astonishing video technology. Just like Albert Friedrich in 1881, Mary Friedrich Rogers, her son, Wallace Rogers III, and his children, the original family continues to be dedicated to providing an interesting, intriguing experience for all generations. Continue the time-honored family tradition of the Buffalo.